everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun pop-up card. So inside you have these kind of pieces that flap about on acetate and it just gives a really fun effect. Now I, I actually made this one during my Hobby Base Live tutorial a couple of weeks ago or it would have been a couple of weeks by the time you see this video and the inspiration for this came from a lady, her blog's called My Stamp Lady but it was from 2010 and hers had stars on the inside and I just thought what a real you know clever card and it's really really easy to make so the inspiration came from hers but the measurements and I guess well this is, I guess this is how she would have put it together. I didn't see that, I just saw the picture and um, really liked it. So I'm gonna show you how to make it using the new Secret Garden collection because I just had this, this idea to put together just a really detailed little card and I've done lots of stuff and so far I'm really, you know, enjoying and liking what I've done. So I have got everything here and I'm gonna show you a few little kind of tips along the way as I like to do, but I've done the bulk of it. So this is the Secret Garden collection. If anybody new to my channel hasn't seen this yet, this is the new Dovecraft release and it's amazing. It's my favorite one they've ever, or favorite Dovecraft that I've ever had. Um, I absolutely love it. So I've used the large, these are the wooden toppers, these are the birds. I've used some of the blossoms here, blossoms and leaves. All these links and everything is on my Amazon storefront and I'll also share other links on my blog as well to where you can get this. I've used the pearl flowers. I've fussy cut images from the actual paper pack um, and I've just put it in this one here. This was the wooden shapes, which was the little picket fence, which I'll show you in a moment. I've used the ribbon, the bunting and these paper flowers along with the washi tape and the six by six paper pad. Okay, so lots and lots of the collection used in this one today, but as always, you can make this card with obviously something completely different. So that's the paper pack and you always get the overview there of the papers on the front, which is really nice. And then here I've got everything. So on the front, this is my front already done. So underneath here, I have some silver mirror cardstock, then some paper that I've cut from the paper pack, then a silver doily, which I shared. This was in my What Did I Get? And this was from the works. And a few of you have already told me that you've already received or purchased your silver doilies. They're beautiful. And then on top, I've just done this kind of little cluster there, and that's the ribbon. So on the front, it says just for you. This is a piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters and then the mat is four and a half by six and a half standard layers mats and layers for a five by seven card base also you're going to need two five by seven card blanks however we are going to be cutting into this so if you don't have the card blanks i'll give you the exact size in a moment there's the little um picket fence so i've had one left so i've distressed this popped a little kind of like uh, that was a brad that i cut to look like a little gate um, the rest of these got used on my She Shed storage box, which also uses a lot of this collection. So I'll link that up here again if you're new and you'd like to see what else you can make with this. So I've got that ready. I have already created some grass and I will show you, kind of talk about that in a bit more because I've got one there I need to finish off. I've created my bunting. I've gone ahead and fussy cut lots of bits and pieces because this is all going to be part of the decoration inside. And then I've got all of these mats and layers as well. Okay, so with the two card blanks here, what I'm going to do is pop it in here so you've got the top kind of flapping to the left here and you've got the score line here. That score line, you want to line up with the half an inch marker. Now on this Tim Holtz guillotine, the half inch marker is literally the metal kind of plate here. So I'm just going to line mine up with that and make sure the bottom is obviously lined up as well. Um, I've had people ask why my arm goes all the way back. Mine's actually broke. I dropped this. That's why it goes all the way back. So if I, for safety reasons, it shouldn't. It should lock in somewhere down about here, I think, maybe even just about there. So yeah, <laughs> that's why yours, don't think yours is broken because yours doesn't go all the way up. Yours is all, yours is good. So you want to then cut the whole piece off. So you're going to do that on two of them. Now, if you, like I said, if you don't have the card blanks, then you'll just want two pieces of cardstock that are five and a half by seven. And along the five and a half inch side, you will score at five. And it will give you this little half inch tab. Okay, because those are the pieces that we will end up sticking together like so. Okay, so now that acts as a hinge on the inside of the card and there's the front and the back. Okay, so it is very, very easy, um, but really fun to do. So that's that done. Now I'm gonna go straight in and pop down all my mats and layers because these pieces I don't actually need to, you know, once they're stuck down, nothing else is gonna be um, done with those. It's all about the pop-up element in the middle, which I will go through in a bit more detail in a moment. So 
The same mats and layers that I gave you for this piece here on the front is what you need for the inside. So I've got two silver pieces here which are four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So they are going there. Okay. And then I have two pieces of four and a half by six and a half and they will go perfectly on top. And then I've got this one here. In fact that one is my one that I'm having on the back, like so and this one is going on the front. Then on the back one, I have this piece here. So, so I've just stamped in silver embossing powder, sending many wishes your way, and I've just cut a rectangle, any size, and then the smaller one there, which is in white so I can write on it. I've gone and distressed all the edges with this little tool here. It's by Dovecraft, and you literally, it has tiny little blades in these little sections different size blades and you just go along and you scratch the side and it just gives you a really nice kind of distressed a bit of a shabby chic look really so you do get a few bits that come off you just need to brush them away and then that one it's upside down because obviously it's facing away that one's going to be stuck like so now I've also added some washi tape there which is this floral one here from the collection I stuck that down first and then when you stick that over the top you just get a little bit of it poking out the sides. On the one facing the front, I have this piece here. And again, if you want to do something similar, this is two and a half by the six and a half inch width, because it sits there perfectly on that layered piece. And then I've just stamped this lovely birthday wishes sentiment, again with silver embossing powder, and that's using the woodware and this is the big birthday words which I've used so many times I love it it's just such a nice stamp set again all of these things are linked and a lot of them are already over on my Amazon storefront but that one is going to go there like so so that's that's the inside flat parts all ready to go so I'm going to get that all stuck down Okay, so I've stuck everything down, so that's the front panel, so whoever opens it, that's what they will see at the front, and then that is the back panel where I will write my message, and then those pieces are all going to be stuck together. So next, what we need to do is we start creating the scene, so it's quite nice to get that all laid down, and then you can kind of see, you know, how everything else is going to look. So you want to fold these tabs inwards, okay, like so, and you're going to add adhesive onto those sides there. Now I'm going to use red tape. And for the moment, I'm just trying to find, I'm going to use this one here, which is a quarter of an inch. Now, this tab is obviously half an inch. I would advise, don't put the adhesive right down to the fold side. You want to keep it more up towards the this edge here. Okay, so I'm just going to run my tape kind of in the middle, really. Okay, so don't worry if it doesn't cover it all, because, it yeah, it makes sense once you start to put it all together. Off that piece there. I'm just going to work on one side for the moment. So I'm working on the side with this facing me so I'm going to be creating my scene that's going to pop up so what I want to do is I've got this bunting here okay now it doesn't matter if you don't have this collection you can easily make some bunting you can just cut some small triangles out now I've already gone ahead and measured that this is going to work and I'm going to have it sitting like that okay now behind these ones here I'm going to have my acetate which is going to come down and stick here so I've just got some acetate here I didn't know kind of what size I want it but my strips are going to be half an inch so I'm just roughly eyeballing half an inch there now you want a strong acetate because obviously whatever you have you want to make sure it's going to pop up so I'm just going to cut them for the minute I don't know like I said if I'm going to need more I'm not sure if I'm going to have the birds popping up as well but I want to sit the acetate on there and then bring it down it's going to kind of be on an angle and then it's going to come and sit down here. So now I can see where I, I need it to lie. I'm now going to just trim that off. But again, you don't want the acetate poking. You don't want it coming right down to that fold line. Okay, because you'll end up seeing it. So like here, if I bring up this one, you can't see anything that I've stuck inside there. Okay, because it's all kind of further up within this half inch section. So now I've got that one roughly where I need it. I'm going to just pop this one underneath here. So I'm just kind of showing you the process that I am going to be doing for this kind of bunting. But anything you have, you want to lay it down first before you actually commit to sticking it down. So even if you're doing these here, you know, I had them all laid down first of all here. So I could just check that I had them the right height. And you also want to make sure that whatever you have doesn't overhang here 
because when you close it up obviously it's going to stick out and it won't fit in your envelope. That's why I wanted to lay this bunting down first just to make sure everything's going to work. So I'm happy with where that is going to kind of lie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the backing off of this first. Now I've moved them but that's fine. I want to get them in place so I'm going to stick that one down and then bring this one back. Okay, so they're in place so I'm going to remove that for the minute and then on the very ends of these acetate pieces I'm going to pop some of this red tape. Again I would advise to use a double sided tape or you know the strong double sided tapes or the red tape when you're working with acetate because it will just stick much much better than any of your liquid glues. Eventually they will just end up peeling off really. Okay so that's those and then I'm just going to take off the backing like so and then I can just again hang it over and kind of start to bring it up a little bit just so you can see how it's going to work but I know it's all going to work so now I can just lay that down like so. There go, I'm happy with that. Now another thing that you will want to do, I'm just going to carefully fold that back over. So now when that pops up, when the envelope, when the cards open, this is going to hang like this and it's going to look really nice. But you want something, again I'm just being a bit detailed and a bit picky I guess, but when that person reads this side, you also want the other side to look nice. So if you are making your own bunting you'll want to cut double really so you can stick on the back as well. But the nice thing with these that are in the pack is you get so many of them. So I'm going to just add some red tape onto the other side of that acetate piece like so and then I'm also going to add some wet glue just around the string and the any other kind of exposed pieces and then I have my here and I'm just going to stick those completely right over the top like so like that and then I'm going to actually trim off now the string Okay, so right now I have this really pretty bunting kind of dangling around. So now is the time to lay this down again and make sure, so I could have a little bird kind of sticking up here, or maybe one or two there, but because I've got this gate that I'm going to have maybe here on the other side, I'm probably not going to have anything else kind of floating around. I think I'm just going to stick with that. So like I said, if you do want to add more stuff, then you know do that whilst it's in this position. Now I'm going to bring this one back here and I'm going to run some tape along the very top like so. So just go over the acetate there and then you want to line them up with the tabs folding outwards so you, you know you've got room to kind of move it around without it sticking. Make sure they're completely married up. Hold it down with your hand like this and then you can just pinch up the two together like so. There we go. And now your little pop-up piece kind of floats around and it looks really nice. That's why you want a strong acetate for so it does stay upright like so. So now I am going to decorate everything else. Okay so now I've gone and cut these grass strips and they are going to stick over the top like this and then I was going to have the silver there but do you know what I don't think I'm going to now because it almost mind you though it does tidy it up yeah now I'm going to keep them there you don't have to you can have it no I do like it like that I'm going to leave mine actually I'm going to keep it just like that I'm not going to add the silver strips so if you want to add silver strips you want them to be three eighths of an inch by the full width which is seven and you'll see there how I've used these on here okay so it just decorates that white piece but because I'm going to add this grass over the front so I'm going to stick this one down here I'm just going to run some of this double sided tape along the bottom okay so that's that one stuck down and I really like that I think that actually looks really cute now the way to get that grass is exactly the same way as I make the any of the kind of tassels I make and things like that and basically I just cut a strip so again the same width so length sorry so this is seven inches and I use these vegetable scissors so it was by one and a half in width and then it was like I said seven in length and just go along and just cut up and then I went in with my scissors and just kind of shaped them all so just like so and you just get little grass effects and then just to add a little bit of I've got like a blend, a really nice ombre effect and I'm just using, this is the Shabby Shutters Distressed Oxide and just coming in, I've already done that side so I just have this side left to do and you just kind of just catch the tops really of the, the grass 
and again it just gives a nice little subtle blend and just adds a little bit more to the card really like so and I really loved the effect it gave me on my paper as well so again another idea there for something I'm sure so yeah it was just again I don't know how well that is picking up you probably see it better in the camera but you can just about make it out there it's just a little bit of something so don't worry if you haven't you don't have to do it but like I said I do like adding all these little extras so move that out of the way because I don't want that to ruin anything else so again I'm just going to pop some tape along the bottom of this one and stick it down okay so now in the middle I've got this really cool grass effect and because I've doubled them up it just looks really full and I absolutely love how that looks. So next I'm just going to start adding all these bits and kind of nestle it all in. So I've got my gate which is going to stick like so. Okay so that is a bit bulky I know but it's fine I like it. And then I'm going to have the watering can, the birds and all kinds of bits and pieces. I've fussy cut some flowers and they're going to kind of just poke out of the grass. And yeah I'm going to put this on to high speed now just so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll show you it all finished. Okay, so there is the finished card. So that's the front with all that lovely detailing there. I absolutely adore it. And then as you open it up, oh, <laughs> that pops out and that is how it looks when it stands up. So it does stand up. I think I've got a little bit of added weight there with that little wooden fence, but you can see there it's fine. It's completely straight and I absolutely adore it. Let me bring it up so you can see that's how it looks. How cute. All those little images. I just love the illustrations, love that little fence. I just think that bunting looks great and yeah there's the front and then on the back I also added a couple of the little birds there as well so it's really easy it's just down to how you decorate it really so if you've got I always say if you've got a collection and if it matches it it's just really fun to work with I think I love creating these kind of little mini scenes I think that's why I'm loving this collection so much because I can do so but so there you have it two really fun little pop-up cards I love it I think it's brilliant so yeah there it is guys I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye